Okie dokie. Well, hi everybody, and back on once again. And today I thought I'd go ahead and do some more uh, Mega Knockdown. Um, but there, there might, there's going to be a chance that maybe sometime later on I might actually switch back to playing pinball. I don't know, but uh, it just I went ahead and put it in my Twitch description just in case to give people a heads up. Um, and also, yes, I'm on very early. Normally, uh, normally my default time is 2.30 p.m. And it's, uh, it's 1.05 p.m. right now. So, yeah, I'm on quite early. Um, just lay down at 4, I think I lay down around 4 a.m. And then, and officially woke up around, uh, around noon. So, technically I got eight hours, but unfortunately, um, it was either dream and nightmare filled or two. I just woke up for no apparent reason. Just, just got up, just, like I said, just out of the blue, woke up. So, I don't know what the deal was with that. So, yeah, basically I got eight hours of bad sleep. So, there might be a chance that, uh, even, even right now I'm feeling a bit groggy. Hopefully that'll get better as the stream goes on, but we'll see. So, once again, um, once again, might switch over to pinball here after, after a bit, um, too, and that also assumes that I don't decide to shut it down immediately because I can't stay awake, so, but like I said, it's, it's all going to be a judgment call here later, and then, um, and, oh, 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 one more thing, and then, like yesterday, gonna have some black beans with teriyaki sauce. And my usual chocolate almond milk. So, eating healthy. Well, and of course, I'm not eating junk food. So, got that on the back burner. Um, and then musically, um, this is gonna be Frozen Planet 1969. Uh, Meltdown on the Horizon. This is gonna be, I think it came out, I. I mean, technically, the album itself came out in 2019, a couple years, or about three years ago. Um, it just got uploaded, like, I want to say about a week ago. But, um, but a good chunk of the music I'm going to be playing is going to be from, a uh, from a channel called Morphe. They, uh, play a lot of, uh, a lot of rock on there. Uh, stoner rock, psychedelic rock, um... I think there's something else in there too. Can't remember what, but uh, but yeah, a good a good chunk of today's music is gonna be from that. Um, I've I've switched it up here and there, and then even then, I might also decide to go ahead and throw on a podcast instead. So it's been a while since I've checked. It's been a while since I've listened to one of those. So, so let me go ahead and get that fired up.
Yeah. So I'm gonna try up. Uh, I'm gonna try blitz mode. Okay. What'd you do? <laughs> Got it to work, huh?
Oh. Got him. Yeah. So what did you do? Oh, damn. You don't get shit for time. So, let's... Yeah. Oh, chipped out. Okay. Oh, you just start over. Oh.
only one stinking win. Nobody's on. I just don't. It's not a fan plus. It's, it's too short of a song by. Don't! Like, that's it. was faster. I got 
last one to stand. Okay. Fight! Missile hurricane is unbelievable. Uh. Okay. at a random select. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, 
that didn't work. Nope, oh, he got his on first, and that was a fucking perfect. It's official. You suck. Select down here. Oh.
another ball.
that didn't work out so well. Yep, 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 yep. Just barely. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, 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 Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 Oh, he's a grappler. Oh. oh God damn. Okay. Fight. Yep, it seems I'm being button red. Yep, button red. Yep, 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 yep. Fight. First, for some reason, Let's jump in. Nope.
Well, how about that? Just barely. That's a rare one there. Very rarely do I get that kind of multi ball. I wonder if Montero will be unlockable. That's all. He followed me yesterday. Um, didn't really know who he is. I guess he was uh, the creator of this game. Didn't know that. All right. Wonder where the credits are. I'm gonna... Possibly to the Jagrin... To the... To the Jagrin of other people. I'm gonna look for a... Uh, thought I had it in here. Here, let me scroll up. Thought I had it. Apparently not. Yeah, I'm beginning to doze off right now. Here, let 
Let me... Jacob's Ladder? Oh, this is black metal. Never mind, never mind. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna fire up Triple KO, but, uh... Pause it real quick. As, as picky as this might sound, yeah, just gonna skip it. There's gonna be a... They're gonna plug a sponsor on here, and, um, I'm not in the mood to... I'm not in the mood to chase it down and, like... Like, uh, cut it out and all that, so... Seems nobody else did. I guess I gotta spell it out. This podcast is brought. Pause. If I don't put this on, I'll probably end up falling asleep or end up killing the stream. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Monday, the 21st motherfucking Thanksgiving week, Jack. It's This is fucking real. This year has uh, flown the fuck by. Before I even start saying anything, I want to... I, I don't know what the fuck happened Sunday night in Colorado Springs, Saturday night. Some fucking guy went crazy in a gay bar, took a fucking gun or whatever, you know. I saw that Sunday morning when I woke up. And I got to be honest with you guys, like, as something that always bothered me was I had to take a test in 19, like, 92, like a, a parenting test. And the results came back that I had no empathy. And that always fucking bothered the hell out of me, you know. Like, who the fuck doesn't have empathy? Like, I don't know if it was a fix. I don't know what the fuck it was. But I'm the type of guy, when I read something like that, no matter what it is, like the next morning, whether it's Buffalo or Uvalde or whatever the fuck it is, you always think about those people the next morning. Like, I can't imagine having a son, and I get a call tip, at tip, four tip, in the tip, morning tip. that some guy walked into a bar and shot him. And you got to go down there and identify yeah, 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 and yeah, find yeah, out yeah, what yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah. happened. Nobody's giving you answers. And then on top of that, it's fucking Thanksgiving week. It's 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 horrible, you know, having right. to bury somebody on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I don't know what's going on in the world. I, who the fuck knows anymore? We, you know, we, just love uh, we don't get in a situation like that. I pray for people that never get in a situation like that and hit home because one of the guys that comes on the podcast, one of my dear dear friends, Eric Rocha, he's gay and he's from Colorado Springs, so. I called him last night, I didn't get an answer from him, I just, you know, hey listen, man, I'm not Johnny fucking therapist, but something like that happens, it hits close to home, you know, you gotta reach out and say hello, how you feeling, you know, everybody takes everything differently, you know, not that he was gonna be in Colorado Springs, he lives in Elko, but that could happen anyway, you know, and, and what kills me is, like, later on that night, like Sunday night, I, I went out and I can't, got back, or something that they, you know, right away this comes days after the Republicans. I mean, I'm sick and tired of everything getting politicized anymore. You know, everything's got a political agenda anymore. Everybody's got a conspiracy theory. It's, uh, it's crazy what the fuck is going out there. You know, if you're, uh, I don't know, if you're intelligent, if you're not intelligent, you gotta ask yourself what the fuck is going on from time to time. You know, the other day on Patreon, one of my friends on Patreon sent me, uh, one of the guys what? on Patreon, good guy, he's been on there for like a year, sent me yeah. a YouTube clip, and he's like, have you seen these, you know, and you go on there what and you read? see uh, fucking two guys I've never even saw before on a podcast, just destroying Burt Reicher, like just destroying Burt Reicher about 
the movie he's doing or the movie, the trailer came out or something like that. And listen, whether you liked it or fucking not, I mean, the movie hasn't even come out yet. And there was two kids trashing Bert that the movie sucked. Look at this. Look at that. I'm like, I don't even know these two guys. They had to be like 25 or whatever, but just trashing fucking Bert and his movie. And I'm like, I was a friend and I didn't even call him up and go, Bert, that fucking trailer or whatever. I, it's just crazy. I'm looking at the oh, door. I saw it wakes up in the morning. You wake up, you fucking John Leguizamo's at war yeah, yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This time with Steven Seagal, you know. And it's like, guys, you know, all of a sudden, like fucking, uh, everybody who's putting out a book lately has got to trash somebody. You put out a book, this guy from Friends, with his, he's trashing fucking Keanu Reeves. The chick put out a book, she's trashing fucking this guy. It's like everything that comes out is to trash somebody now. It just can't be fucking, yeah. it just can't be like a book. Like this was what happened to me in my fucking story. And, uh, this is what I'm gonna fucking say. You know, right away we gotta go throw a a, a dag at something. Oh, no. I love busting people's balls, and I love to have a good time. But I'm not gonna write a book to dedicate it. It's just to throw a little bit of at anything, guys. Just so you know where this comes from. Just so you know where this comes from. When those people go in to pitch those books, and I, and I gotta tell you, this is gonna make me mad. I had about four million oh, different out. publishers before I sold yeah, the book. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. people were like, <laughs> no, we didn't really want to talk to you because of what happened with Rogan on the podcast and, you know, the blowjob. And I'm like, you know, wow, this is uh, surreal. Like, that's going to fucking take my chances of, of fucking selling the book, you know. But anyway, I got to be honest with you, man. The bigger publishing companies, they didn't give a fuck about my story. They really didn't. They were like, and they mentioned specific fucking names. Like, can you tell us any dirt on this guy? You know, you being in Hollywood for 23 years. That's what they want. What they want, you know, that's what they want. They'll even give you an extra fucking yeah, hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you, you ever seen the movie Molly's Game? About Molly, the, the chick that was in charge with gambling. It's a bullshit story. It's got to do more with Spider-Man and Leonardo DiCaprio being part of the game. But Molly's... Uh, whatever the fucking name of the movie, Fight. Molly's Game, Molly's Book, whatever the fuck it is, she talks about it. She goes, when they offered me the book, the reason why I had such a low uh, guarantee, they call it like a deposit, whatever the fuck they really call it, was because that's what they ask you. They go, are there any juicy fucking details in there? You know, we know, like, they even did their work. Like, they, do you have more to have with Whitney Houston? I mean, they just had questions, and I'm like, no. Because that's not what the book is about. The book is about a loser that was a loser that was a loser. And in some way he got lucky and he fucking became a comic. And next thing you know, he's on stage with Joe Rogan and Bill Burr. That's what the fucking book is about. Fight. But a lot of people don't know that. That when you uh, sell a book, especially if you're one of those people, like a tell-all book. Like if I fucking call somebody tomorrow, like a book publishing company, and I want to tell you everything I know about this thing that happened. And I give you... Uh, you know, they'll ask for uh, information and all that. Dog, your fucking advance is ginormous. So, whenever you see these ads for people, oh, Gina Davis put out a book and she's trashing fucking scumbag and fucking, uh, you know, uh, the guy from Friends, whatever his fucking name is. Oh, put out a book and he's fucking, you know, he's blaming his addiction on the dumbest fucking things in the world. I just... I can't even read that shit, but I know where it's coming from. So now you people know that when that shit goes down, they gave him some extra money. He sold his money. I didn't want to fucking sell my soul. I've sold it enough. I didn't want to start with this shit. But that's what's fucking going on this week, man. I'm excited. This weekend, I had a fucking gr blast. You know, we can all look. I go to jiu-jitsu as a hobby. I'm not a fucking fighter. I'm through the air no more. I don't do, you know. I, I do the best I can, guys. But I go to jiu-jitsu just to stay healthy. It's more of a, of a social thing for me. Like, I go there and see people. Yeah, 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 and yeah. talk to people my age and younger. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah, wrestle, yeah, you're yeah. fucking sweaty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing. But Fight. it's a hobby. It's a hobby that I've never fucking had. Like, my hobby was comedy. That's all I fucking knew. Uh, 
for the last 40 years. My co my hobby was to watch movies, study them, and then I became a comic. And I went out uh, so I oh, God. Oh, that sucked. So me and my wife were talking right. a couple months ago, like, we just need some shit. You know, we need something going on in our life. My wife went back to work last week a couple days. Oh, uh, I wasn't trying, trying to take it. Something. I was trying to you move know, backwards. Days, my wife will say something to me, and I go, that's the mind. Oh, that's right, I got knocked working. down. Because if it's something that small, you wouldn't fucking worry about it in the big fucking world, you know? So, uh, she started working, but something else, they called her from the rec center, and they asked if she wanted to coach girls basketball. So she put a team together with my daughter and some of the girls and so forth. I went to the practice last oh, Wednesday. I did not know what to do. What hell of a comeback. Guys, you know I'm a basketball guy. That's my world. Before I became the fucking biggest loser in the world, I, I love I love basketball. I loved it, and then I was somebody broke me freshman year, and I never played it again. It's a fucking shame, you know. I mean, I played pickup games as I got older, and I gambled playing basketball on myself. We hustled people, but I never played uh, whatever number one. That always weighed on me. It weighed on me for fucking years. That was like a. Uh, it was more like something that I never wanted to do again, you know? And when I quit basketball, I walked away from it. I walked away from it. Oh, I, uh, I played yeah, my yeah, freshman yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. February or March, I got into smoking dope and partying big, and I'm like, I'm not going to play basketball. I'm not going to take this shit. You know, either I start or I'm not going to fuck it. I wasn't willing to work, you know, and I quit. And I walked away from it, and I saw the kids that I played with and came up with become varsity basketball players. And I got to tell you something, guys. It wasn't my mother's death at the time. It wasn't that I was confused. It wasn't that I was doing drugs or I was yeah, a criminal. Yeah, 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 One of yeah, the things yeah, that yeah. weighed me down the most was just quitting something. That has such yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, weight yeah, yeah. on you that if you don't give a fuck, you know, and then once you start quitting yeah, things, yeah, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. it builds a pattern for you to yeah, quit yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. It gives you an excuse. Right. That's it. I'm quitting. I'm quitting. I'm quitting. I, you know, you ever meet those people? What happened to your job at the... Oh, the guy was an asshole. What happened to your job at the window place? Oh, they wanted me to work nights. What happened to your job at the bartending place? Oh, the guy wouldn't let me fucking drink on the job. You, you ever meet those people? Those are the people oh. that always fucking quit when the going gets... Hurt. And guys, I was one of those motherfuckers. Like I said before, what I get the comedy? I got the comedy because I tried everything the fuck else. I was a cook. I was a bartender. I was a roofer. I fucking laid railroad right. ties. I, you know how many of those jobs I walked away from after like an hour? Like the same for me, this is too much work. So I don't need to do this. I could sell an eight ball. That was my fucking attitude for years. And it was made to me, available to me by quitting basketball. It was just something. And guys, I was never a fucking quitter. It was just something I didn't like. I hope I was treated. I didn't like that they oh, wanted my, me to fuck my lead. I didn't like that they wanted me to fuck nope. with I guess somewhere in my, in my heart, I thought I was above that, and I just walked away from it. I, I talked about this in the church in the very beginning, that I had quit fucking masonry. I was a roofer. You know, when I was a roofer, I was a little old, and I didn't quit. Knockouts. So my, my wife left me, so wait, I lost wait, my wait, fucking wait, family wait, wait, job. Wait, 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 wait. It's not like I quit roofing. I would have still been roofing. But I quit. I kept quitting shit. And it was all due to that one basketball fucking season when I just go, that's it, I'm not doing this anymore. And I tell you guys, it ate a fucking away at me. And I think that's the reason yeah, why yeah, yeah, yeah. it took me so long to get on stage. That's the reason why it wait, took wait, me wait, so wait, long wait, 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 to my wife. Because I always wanted to make sure, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Got out of prison and I got put in a halfway right. house. I was infatuated with fucking Andrew Dice Clay. I was infatuated with Andrew. I was infatuated with Kennison. I was infatuated with Bill Hicks. I mean, I was just infatuated. And I, the last thing I wanted to do, honest to God, was to go down to Comedy Works, get on stage, and be not like it. Knockouts! That was fucking fearful as fuck. Because if you don't think I thought about that at that time, I was fucking 25 years old, I had nothing going on for me, I was a felon, and now I'm about to put something else on my fucking shoulders, which, uh, in my mind, I thought I could never do. So part of my fear to get on stage was that 
if this didn't work out, I was going to be in a tough fucking position. This was going to get tough for Uncle Joey. I would have had a fucking uh, double up on... I just didn't know what it was. I like, I like the fucking gift of working hard. I like outworking people. I love fucking outworking people. You know, I love all that shit, but it was just so fucking difficult for me to do anything. Oh, God, I was addicted to coke and everything. You want me to work eight hours at 10 bucks an hour? and I'm going to make $80, I can make 100 selling an eight ball. Yep. So that was the stupid excuse I would give to me to fucking legitimize why I would quit whatever the fuck I did. And guys, I had opportunities that most people would pray for. Pray for. I was thinking about an opportunity I had back here in 1984. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, I had... <laughs> I had worked at a lumber yard when I was a kid, and I picked up some good fuck. Like, I knew my, some my, shit my, from my, that my, lumber my, yard. I mean, I really fucking weed. did. It was a part-time yeah, job yeah, yeah. for me, but, you know, I had my, nothing my, else my, going on. My, my, I, my, in, my, my, I was going to school, but when I went into that yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, hardware yeah, yeah. store, I learned what? my shit. Galvanize, screws, fucking door jams, fucking saddles for electricians, plywood, fucking marine plywood. I fucking knew it all. So I got a job at Mazback Sunny Hardware when I quit I my stupid drug habit. And after that, I fucked around for a few years. I was thinking about this job the other uh, day. I got a job might whip. Ooh, got it. With no high school diploma. No GED at the time. I Here we go. Got the button read. And I was experienced enough. And I got a manager's training. Oh, got lucky. Knockouts. Mazback Warehouse right. in like fucking I like to say like East Rutherford or something like this. This was 1984. Summer of 84. You want to head? You ready for this one? It was a 40 hour week. Uncle Joey got a desk job. And helping people order like, you know, like just a, a salesman. And then I worked overtime in the warehouse. They would let me work 20 hours a week in the warehouse at like 20 bucks an hour. Knock out. 20 bucks an hour. It's like 400 yeah, 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 fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. bucks, okay? Plus the fucking, like 16 I was making in the daytime. I still remember not having the money to go get a fucking dress shirt. Like a dress shirt. But here's where it got weird. My days off were Monday and Wednesday. I liked the Wednesday. I liked the Monday. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, crazy yeah, about yeah, the yeah, Wednesday, yeah, yeah, but yeah, the opposite yeah. of that was I had to work on Saturdays and Sundays. The first week I worked, I worked, you know, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I trained the first week, yeah, and yeah, it was yeah, fucking yeah. superb. The first yeah. week I had like a D-hamster. marvelous fucking week. Yeah. But I worked he Monday followed me this Friday. morning or yesterday. The following week I came in Tuesday. Thursday, Friday, and it was like July 10th or something like that, and all my friends were going down the shore on a Saturday, and I was like, come on, man, so I called the guy up, and I made some excuse about Saturday morning, he's like, don't worry about it, just coming Sunday, I got to go down the shore and come back and jump up and down at the Equalus, and I went into work that Sunday, and Sunday was brutal, because my friends were going back to the shore to like Montego Bay, eat more quaaludes and jump up and down. I'm what? like, fuck this. That Saturday I went in there and I was the only salesman there on a Sunday. Uh. Like, uh, what am I fucking doing in here? So that Monday I scrambled. I went in there Monday. I'm like, listen guys, I came sa sa Saturday I had a problem. Sunday I came in here and fucking, uh, you know, it was like a ghost. The phones didn't ring. It's the summertime, guys. Is there any fucking way until the winter can we just work? The whole fucking week. I, I work Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to fucking knockout. I, I didn't give a fuck right. at that time. I just want my weekends off. What's happened, you bad motherfuckers? I'm here to talk to you about DraftKings tonight. You got. So, it seems other people have been a little lax in, uh. in, uh. segmenting these sponsor plugs. So, guess it falls to me. What's happened, you? That's all. 
So, yeah, it looks like it falls to me. No, it's just, uh... Sponsor blocks being shitty. to the fucking podcast. Download DraftKings, cocksuckers. And it won't save it because apparently sponsor blocks being being useless. Whenever you um, whenever you save these segments, yeah, it automatically gets uploaded to a to a database. I just want my fucking Saturday off so I can snort some coke and jump up and down with my fucking friends. The guy goes, "Listen, I love to accommodate you, but these are the rules. I guess I'll see you this weekend. It all works out, brother. This is a great job. Insurance, fucking benefits." <laughs> I mean, fucking free insurance. This is when they used to give you free insurance, dental, toe jam insurance, asshole insurance. You had everything. Eyeball insurance. And uh, I worked that those three days, and that Saturday, I fucking just said, I'm not doing it. I kicked myself in the ass for that job for years. And shortly after Fuck that, out. maybe four months after that, I was fucking homeless. That was the beginning of the homeless. Oh, wait, that's a, so how that was an M. Bison move. I was move. kicking myself in the ass in that <laughs> shit for walking away from that job because it's Saturdays. Because I couldn't work Saturdays. Oh, my God. How will I get my life together? I can't work fucking Saturdays. That is the most immature, dumbest <laughs> fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. But I did it. I did it. That's the type of quitter I was. I had... Ten of those fucking jobs. My buddy got me a longshoreman book. I went one time, no loaded bananas. Left, like, in the <laughs> afternoon. Left. I got bit by a spider or something like that. 20 bucks an hour. My other friend got me a job at APA loading trucks. I went there with a fucking April. I loaded three trucks. I sold a gram, and I got the fuck out of there. Yeah. This was, guys, this was constant. I was America's biggest fucking quitter. And oh, no. Oh. It was, it was uh, pathetic. Fight. But I still remember holding off, holding oh, off. Oh, wait, that was survival. You know, then I didn't quit that job in prison. That's the only job I didn't quit. I kept that job for the six, seven, eight months that I was there. I was the warehouse supervisor driver. That's the only job I couldn't quit. Because if you quit, they put you in the fucking cell now for 24 hours. So I was like, fuck it. I got to maintain this job. So when it came to stand-up comedy, I was like, if I try this and I quit, with this fella, I am officially fucking done. Fuck out. I'm like, okay. Fight. And I waited, and I waited, and I made double fucking sure. And finally, it all fucking worked out when I walked off that stage. I was like, well, I uh, that but it wasn't quitting comedy. It was quitting my fucking day job. I'm like, Fuck out of this fucking job now. How am I going to fucking do comedy with this job? But... I stuck with the comedy, and I stuck with it when it was fucking the toughest. Yeah, when you're an apprentice, you gotta go get coffee, and you gotta dig fucking trenches, and you gotta fucking pick up trash around the job, and you gotta fucking, you know, when you're a prep cook, you gotta cut, and, you, and for the first year, you cut three of your fucking fingers off, you walk around like a Yakuza. You, know, <laughs> you have to pay your fucking debts, and that's when I was giving up. I refused to pay my fucking debt for something. With comedy, I had, I had, it just got so fucking old. It just got so fucking old. I had another job fucking uh, Fight. shoveling snow. Not the 13 an hour with a, I used to shovel snow for 13 bucks an hour, but it was like a hand shovel. And I was really pacing out joints in Snowmass Village, but oh. then I got a job fucking shoveling. So, like a is that slow, truck, huh? Like a little high-low and shit. They gave me like two of clothes and a t-shirt. They gave me two grand for winter clothes, like, oh, yeah, I was walking a fucking plow. They, no. they wanted me Button to get a suit Fight. with heaters in it and shit. They gave me two grand in advance. They, they take it out of the check. I just went and walked 
bought like a t-shirt, like a fucking thermal t-shirt. I remember going the first time, the guy's like, where's your jumpsuit? Oh. Five dollar jumpsuit, where is it? We gave you money. I'm like, I lost the check. You know, whatever. And that job is like fucking 60,000 a year. Fight. And guys, it was the winter. It was the winter. That means if I would have had that job year round, I would have made a buck fucking 30 as a loser. 65,000. In the winter, November, December, January, February, March, $65,000. I fucking did it one night. They came to my house. Oh, they beat the horn. I was coked Fight. up. I gave them the finger out the window. That was enough of that. I was a volunteer firefighter. Guys, over three, if I, I you know what? That's my project for next week. It's going to be kind of quiet. I'm going to write jokes and shit. <laughs> I'm going to write out every fucking job I quit and then put them, post it somewhere on Instagram. You guys will fucking die. And the quality of fucking jobs that I walked away from. Yeah, I walked away from a lot of like fucking, you know, you know, short order hamburger maker, shit that anybody could do by fogging into a fucking glass. But guys, I walked away from John. Fuck oh, People go, Joey, are you fucking kidding me? Not only that, I was a felon. I was a fucking dropout. I was a coke fiend, and I was still getting these jobs. Oh. When that Stu Finer job that I got, you know how much that Stu Finer job paid you? Do you have any fucking idea how much the sports betting service, how much money you make off that shit? Fight. I made $60,000. December of 94. $60,000 in December of 94. I did it in 92. Yeah, I don't and see then they it happening. At the end of 92, because I was just going in there with. Oh, so, it's like I have the same luck playing I swear to God, I would just walk in there with two tissue papers coming out of my nose like fucking Dracula. And they would go, Joey, you can't snort coke in here. I'm not snorting coke. I'm absorbing the coke from last night. And then I would take the tissue out and put it in my mouth like a fucking, uh, like a fucking uh, a pouch. But then you dip in your fucking, in your mouth. It's just, guys, craziness. But it was all attributed to me letting my, like, okay. I just, the comedy guys. I had to think about this before I go. Okay. I probably quit comedy 50 times the first two years. Because it's always like I just bombed a whole week straight. Never mind bombing one show in front of people. That's okay. You can live with that. How do you take a week-long bomb? Like, on that stage, Monday night, bombing. Tuesday night, bombing. Okay. Wednesday night, bombing. Fight. Thursday night, bombing. Maybe one joke worked. You had bright, one bright spot. You fucking uh, made a stupid improvised joke, and one of your jokes made people giggle. Some stupid joke you wrote. Friday night bomb. By fucking Saturday, you're like crying. If I don't get a laugh tonight, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking quitting this Fight. shit. That, that would be me on the coke and on the fucking alcohol the night before. I can't take these bombs anymore. I gotta do something. And I would fucking sit there with the Judy Carter book and fucking tire oh, and fucking cocaine. That's wrong. And I thought you was gonna ruin up, It was terrible. Of course, you only got to be fucking nah. quitting. You only would have done I'm that if I had an accident. Tonight, I don't need this shit. I'd start looking at the jobs in bold and then fucking the next day. I'm like, where am I getting up on stage tonight? Thank God. I am so fucking happy that I didn't let my pussy ass shit take over. The fu but it all goes back to, and I always say this, guys. Best day of my life was the day my mother died because it toughened me the yep. fuck up to no end. I went from fucking zero I to zero, not that I had done anything, but I understood what life was. You know when you're a kid, you walk around like, what's rent? You know, what's a, <laughs> what's the gas bill? What's, you know, mom, can I buy that sweatshirt? Not even thinking of it. Like, dying. You're alone in this fucking world. You learn fucking quick. You're like, okay, this shit is fucking quick. Now. Oh, well, nice to have is, that like, for once. Having a, a Latino mom that, you know, oh, it's going to work out. Your next game, no, there ain't no fucking next game, bitch. It's this game where I should have fucking done what I was supposed to. And that's what the problem is. The he did okay. No, he fucking didn't. He scored in the opposing fucking basket. That's not okay. You know what I'm saying? You got to work with oh, that fucking retard. Okay. Okay. Well, two like perfects that. in a row. How about and, that? And uh, that was my thing. My mother had me fucking soft as fuck. 
So when I quit, when she was alive, I didn't even tell like, I said, you play bad? Like, oh, I was always getting tortured for playing basketball. My block people would come out, hey, you can't do this at six in the morning. You know, all this shit. I'm like, now you're fucking happy. I'm not playing no more, cocksuckers. But I think oh, you know, my worst perfect. Habits yep. you could get Big yourself. monster comeback. Worst. One of the yep, here we go. go. You'll quit relationships. It makes the you price I pay for the two perfects. You opportunities. You'll quit bands. You quit everything. You don't have the ability to sit there and go, okay, this is what needs to be done, and I have this time. Listen, guys, that's maturity. That's fucking maturity. Nope. It's not oh, yeah. Told you. Years old. When you're yep, miraculous old, comeback. I guess that's what's happening. High school, and somebody comes to you and the says, price I pay for getting two perfects. You can retire in 20 years. You're like, fuck that. 20 years. All of a sudden, I get button read the shit. I get button read the shit out of that. Think it. about it. You're 18 years old and you're fucking getting out of the army at 38, five, six thousand dollar a month pension, college education, and you go get another fucking job now and keep your fucking pension. So even if you make four grand a month, you just stepped into the call zone. You're fucking, you ain't missing any goddamn meals. You're not. You're really not missing no fucking meals. So, it's, uh, you can't look at things like that. It's like comedy when I tell people. And this, I, I read it all the time. You send me emails, you're wrong. Comedy doesn't take that long. It just took you that long because you're a loser. Okay. Okay. Uh, whatever. I, I'm, I've seen it. I've been a part of it. I've seen, I've seen uh, people who are stuck for five or six. Because here's the other thing with comedy, why you don't want to quit. And why you don't want to quit anything, okay? Because when you start doing this, listen, what are you talking about? Little jiu-jitsu sure. down there sweeping people and submitting yeah. people. Looks like I'm going to lose this I'm one. I'm half the fucking time. I don't know what I'm doing. And there's tons of days that I say to myself, you know what? I get chipped out. I'm fucking about to be 60. Why am I here? Why am I here? And I won't let myself oh, quit. Throw Even another fireball. Make it oh, got moment. lucky. I will not make my life. Well, how about that? I actually hit him. Do not do. You have to stick with it. It's like people who quit diets. How many diets did I fucking quit over the years? You talk shit on a Sunday this week, you eat salads, and then the fucking Tuesday morning you're eating an ice cream bar. Oh, you know, with Weight Watchers, I stuck it out. But that all went back to Fight. stand up comedy and learning that 10 years is not a long time. Think about it. Think about if I said to you, you could have this in 10 years. These are the things you could have in 10 years if you stay healthy. Oh, no. But you're going to have security. You're going to be able to pay your rent. You could be able to take your girlfriend on a trip every time she wants to fucking go. You know, that's what gets my dick off is that I don't want to be rich, but I want to. I, I don't want to go fuck. I wish. Oh, no. And if I would have jumped you to uppercut it, it anyway. Fucking ease so where you wish the nature of the button read. Anything. So, it's just, uh, don't let yourself Fight. quit at any fucking level, guys. I mean, it ruined my fucking life for 10 years, you know? And even after the fucking stand-up comedy, I think I did some, uh, things, like just day jobs that I didn't show up to, or oh, construction jobs that I ended up Fight. just robbing a hammer and quitting, and I was, you know, it snowed here on the East Coast this weekend. Uh, whatever, it snowed up in 77 inches, up in whatever. Uh. And it's been cold. It's been really fucking freezing the last couple of days here in Jersey. And a couple of nights ago, I had to take a ride somewhere and I had to drop some off in my friend's mailbox. And I pulled up and there was no parkings and I went over to fucking, I went over a thing of leaves. You know, oh, Tony, God. Tony Soprano, Fight. when his fucking son, when the fucking car blew up or whatever, the, the Nissan truck. The utility vehicle blew up because you have a, a catalytic converter over uh, uh, a bunch of leaves. And I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, the scams I was doing when I first got into comedy. Like, not when I first got into comedy. Like, from 94 to 95 and a half, I, uh, it was the big Latin boom in Denver. So all the car dealers were looking for uh, Latin salesmen, you know, Spanish salesmen. And I had, you know, I had a pretty good reputation selling cars in Boulder and whatnot. So I had a, like a pseudo cousin who told a bunch of people in Denver about him. This kid speaks Spanish. He's Cuban. He's a comedian. So he could do your advertising. Right, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and break off for a few minutes. 
So for a bath. Yeah, I gotta use the bathroom, and I was kidding you guys. most so likely I'll probably make you something else to eat while I'm in up, Denver, so. which is October of '93, November of '93, to uh, June of '95. I had no money for a car. I used to borrow the car from the uh, from the deli. They had a delivery car anyway, that used to be back. all those things that pulls and it has a hook at the end to seal it down. Like if you you put a TV in the a bungee cord. That's how you closed my door, with a fucking bungee cord, okay? If you made a fucking sharp left, the door opened up. A uh, sharp right, the door opened up. I got all those stories for you motherfuckers, okay? I don't want you to think that, you know, there was a Mercedes Benz one then. So I went back there and I'm fucking driving this car and shit like that. I don't even know, oh. And my cousin said to me, you know, these people, Douglas Toyota, uh, Rocky Mountain Nissan, John Elway, and let me tell you something, I picked them all apart. Every month, every six, every fucking ten weeks, I'd be at a new dealership, and this is my deal: five thousand, five hundred dollar draw, a new car to drive, and the commercials. I have to shoot commercials for like, uh, you know, Latin. I love to find those fucking commercials that I did. They are god awful. But the first one I did them for was Douglas Toyota. So you would shoot these stupid commercials. Hello, my name is Antonio Lea. Estoy aquí en Douglas Toyota, donde se vende el Toyota de todos los precios. You know, the whole fucking deal. And then people come in and ask for you. Holy shit, guys, was I fucking making money. But I would take these comedy gigs, and then I would have to go to the people and go, hey, I got to do this gig, I got to leave. You can't leave. If you leave, you're fired. Done. Right there. When they say you're fired, I go, okay. And I get on the phone right there at that dealership and I call the other dealership and go, hi, do you need a Latin department? Yes, we do. Who am I speaking with? Joey Diaz. I'll be there tomorrow morning. I would go over there for fucking a month and I would ask him for two drawers and shit. They'd give me a car. Guys, wah, wah. I did this Red grapes. every other month. Some guy gave me $1,000. Some guy gave me 1500 to start. You know, I get an advance at the videos. It was... This is fucking being an open micer guy. This is what you need to do when you pay your bills and shit. And they kept putting it. But the night that I still die about was I went to work for a dear friend of mine. A friend of mine called me in uh, Elwayville. He lived out in uh, maybe Lakewood. That was the name of it, Lakewood Jeep Eagle. It was one of those uh, Bob, the guy who owned like 20 fucking dealerships in Colorado. And my friend Jim Handy, the same guy who talked me into comedy. I got to give him a fucking call, reached out to him, and he goes, hey, I'm, I'm over here running this thing, come out here, and I go, Jim, that's all the way out in Lakewood, I need a fucking car, he goes, come, just come, pick whatever fucking car you want, so I went out there the first day, I took one of those Jeeps and shit, you know, those nice four-door Jeeps, nice fucking pieces of shit, the door would fall off, I remember one day I was selling one of those things in New York, and the passenger was in the driver's side, and I went to get out, and guys, I was 185 pounds at the time, 1990, yeah, 1993, I was probably 215, and I'll never forget that I grabbed on the thing to get out of the car, and the whole ceiling fucking came down the car, I was like, holy shit, I'm not selling this car, but this is, this is the best ever, so I go to work for my friend Jimmy, and I have a, I'm working for this guy named Bill Bow. Bill Bow was a solid fucking booker, he owned a motorcycle shop in, uh, in, uh, Fort Collins, maybe, or one of those, uh, Greeley, when he booked his part-time gig, he wasn't a comic. His part-time gig was booking these shows in Wyoming and fucking hell places. Places where you never even dream of going, but he would find a barn and pack it up. And when I tell you, they were barns, guys. It was like you could smell the chickens and shit. But he paid. He paid, and it was stage time. Who the fuck am I to? But one of my best nights ever, I went up there to the gig, and they're talking snow and shit like that. It was one of those... Mitsubishi had the Eclipse, so Jeep Eagle had the matching car, only with an American name. So whatever Mitsubishi was selling with the Eclipse, these guys had whatever. And I took a brand new one off the fucking floor, and I took it up there. I think I was meeting some girl, and I wanted to impress her, some bullshit. And not two minutes when I get to this fucking gig in Wyoming, I see a fucking snowflake like this big. Like one of those big motherfuckers just lands. Like I could see it all the way down. I'm like, that's a big ass snowflake. And once it touched my glass, like a thousand of those motherfuckers were everywhere. And I went in, I think I was MCing. So I had to 
do my 15, bring up the Rick Kearns, and then bring up, I forget who the headliner was. And that night, they were like, guys, it's coming down. If you guys want to spend the night here. It was one of those two-footer snows yeah, in Miami. That was they come down down there. And I guess it wasn't gone that long. Car and flying down I-70 or wherever the fuck I was. And at one point, I couldn't see because there was so much snow, and I pulled over. And I, I'll never forget this. I pulled over, but I could see there was a gas station there. And I'm like, maybe I'll go over there and get something to eat and stop. But I, I, I need to stop over here because I couldn't fucking see anymore. The, the snow was coming down at a high rate. And all of a sudden, I smell fucking smoke. Huh? Right? And I'm just sitting there. The car is on. I'm just relaxing. I smell fucking smoke. And I'm like, where the fuck is this smoke coming from? It's a brand new car. It's a brand new fucking car. Why should this car be smoking? Yeah. I swear to God, I get out of the fucking car. And I can hear, like, crumpling paper. Like, when paper's burning. There was a fire under the fucking hood, guys. And I'm talking about, it reminded me of trains, planes, and automobiles. And it was one of those type of nights, only with heavier fucking snow. My God, guys. I'll never forget looking at the car. And it started burning and burning. And then fire was coming out of the hood and shit. The car was still running. I just happened to go in there and get tip, my tip, fucking tip, bag tip. out of there. I sat there for about 15 minutes like what? a fucking snowman while that car just burned and burned. I didn't know if it was going to blow up or not. I go, I'm not going to be here for when it fucking blows. I got to I went. From out to that gas you were knocked down, Joe. There. And guys, I looked over the car and that car was on fire. And fucking fire trucks were there. I'm like, holy shit. How am I going to get home? So I paid one of the guys and he's like we're just leaving now we'll pick you up what happened to your car well you'll see when you get me at the gas station <laughs> and that was the end of that i guess i had to quit that fucking job there was no chance of oh, no. So I, had a, I just called jim on monday right. go your car's in wyoming get it towed what happened to it? i don't know what happened he called me a few days later he wasn't mad at me it was like the timing chain was some shit that happened yet. Yeah, so. But that's where we're at today, cocksuckers. It's Thanksgiving week. And uh, I don't want to take up all your time. You know, I don't do a fucking hour no more. Okay. So, yeah, that's it for the podcast. But like I said, I just threw him on just just because I'm already all starting to. So. Based on that, there is going to be a chance that I might be switching over to pinball. So. So yeah, this is going to be ten paw. Uh, Velas Inquietas Del Ire. I'm guessing Spanish. Oh, also with this guy here, M.M. Lewis, I believe there's an achievement where if you can do arcade mode without blocking once, then yeah, you'll get a you'll get an achievement. But that's what I'm going for right now. Fight. Knockouts. 
fight. Try to do a back sweep. Knockouts. Yep, 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 yep. Yup, 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 yup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh! Should have done the big slam. Knockouts! Fight. So, looks like I'm gonna lose this one. everything. And remember too, I can't block. So yeah, I'm gonna lose this. Damn, did I ever get lucky there? Oh, yes, he had to reach. Lose. Well, how about that? I actually hit. Controller died. So, let me up. So I gotta grab this other cord here, plug it in. Oh. 
Well, actually connected. Close enough, wrong. So I guess you can't jump when you're knocked down then. Not kicked anyway. I figured he's gonna uppercut. So we'll probably do the same. Okay. Well, how about that? Guess he'll let me have that one.
course. This one here is going to be another button we watch. Well, how about that? My, 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 my. my fault. I can't move when I'm knocked down. like Heartbreaker by Led Zeppelin. What's not? So let me uh, pull up my Steam page.
I'm guessing that's the uh, uppercut. Callous fingers won't make you strong, Mr. Wong. Um, Perry is glitter in the dark. Moments are lost in time, but tears in the rain. No idea what you gotta do to get that one. one octopus diver dark earth's blues i think it came out about a week or two ago Arcade mode in blitz, blitz mode. Tip, 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 fight. backwards. Wait, no, it's not down. No, that was why. Of course. Oh, yo, 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 yo. that he actually let me have one. For some reason that beat. Knockouts. So playing pretty ass right now. Yep, 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 yep. Fight. Sure. Joe, you can't move. 
So it looks like he's got a button read everything. Gotta go fast. Got another sheep. Oh. Yeah, 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 Alright, I gotta I gotta go on my Steam page real quick. Um uh, Screenshot of that. Probably gotta win this round. Yep. Knockouts. For all intents and purposes, that was a perfect.
No idea what happened Fuck there. Those. Fight. Should have been medium. Of course. Got his off first. Yo, yo, yo. All right, same thing there. Gonna, I'm gonna go back on my screen page or Steam page. Screenshot that. without bullet speed because you basically only have one second to get your moves off. So I'll tell you what, um, yeah, I'm going to momentarily, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream and then I'm going to start off switching on over to pinball. So, doink. 